In this video, I want to show the difference between the comparable interface and the comparator interface. The compare to method of the comparable interface should be used to order objects using their natural order. And natural order can be kind of a slippery thing. Because if you think about integers, natural ordering for integers is quite simple. You probably just want them ascending. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up the scale. But other things, like the student class right here, it becomes a tad bit more difficult. Because what is natural ordering for a student? Is it by grade level, GPA, name? The most obvious of the three would probably be by name. But what happens if you have Sue Smith twice or Bob Brown twice? Then you would have duplicate ordering inside of your list. So in order to alleviate that, what most schools do is they organize students by ID. And so what I've done inside of this program is added an instance variable ID, added it to the constructor, and I've also added an accessor method, getID, which returns the ID. And then I've changed the equals method to indicate that two items are equal by their ID number, which should never be true because two students should not have the same ID number. That's the whole purpose of IDs. And also, I've added inside the toString method to print out what the ID is. Now, let's change our compare to method to reflect ID numbers as opposed to GPA. One thing that I didn't mention in the previous videos, but is good programming practice, is to say this equals method right here should reflect zero down here in the compare to method. So two items should be evaluated by the compare to method and the equals method in the exact same way. So let's go ahead and do that with this. Instead of making the first condition right here our one condition, let's make it our zero condition. If this dot equals other, then we're going to return zero. So it's going to come up to our equals method and say, if the IDs are equal, they're equal. We're going to change this to ID, change this to greater than, change this to one then, and then finally have our last condition as negative one. So now the equals method and the compare to method are in sync with one another. Let's go look at our program, Interface 10. Now, in order to use the Comparator interface, you have to import it from the Java Util package. So I'm just going to do a Control J in JCreator and change this to Comparator. If you don't do this, you won't be able to use it. And we're going to make this class implement the Comparator interface. And it also uses generics, so we're going to say that it's going to be comparing two students. If you notice here, I've added the compare method, not compare to, but just compare method of the comparator interface to the interface 10 class. Notice that it compares two objects, and it's not inside of the class that we're trying to compare. It's external from the class. So we can compare students in any way that we would like. The first way that we would want to compare is, of course, to say, are they equal? Well, we're going to do it differently than the natural ordering. We just set the natural ordering to be by student ID, but we're going to set this ordering to be by grade grade level. So if we say s1 dot get grade equals s2 dot get grade, we're going to return zero. Otherwise, if it's one, we want them to be greater than. So we're going to copy this and just change the equal sign to greater than. And then negative one will stay the same. As we look down at the program, we can see that I have used the compare to method of the student class to compare these two objects, S1 and S2. And so that's going to do natural ordering. Secondly, down here, I've used the compare method. And remember, the compare method is not of the student class. It is of the interface 10 class. So I say interface 10, and I just called it other way to indicate this is another way that I'm going to compare the objects, new interface. And so they're making the same comparisons. Both the compare to and compare methods either return a positive number, negative number, or zero. And so let's see how the results come out.
And we see that Bob comes before Joe, and the reason is, is because in natural ordering, the ID is what matters. But on the second one, the compare returns negative one, and Joe comes before Bob because his grade is less than Bob's grade. So some of the advantages of using the comparator interface is that you do not have to mess with any code inside of the class and you can compare two objects any way you would like. One last thing that I want to show you is how to use the compare method in a different way. So instead of grade, let's say that instead of sorting student IDs by ascending order, I want to sort them by descending order. Well, all I would have to do is change a little bit of code inside of our compare method. So they would still be the same if S1 and S2 had the same ID number. But instead of greater than, we'd want to do less than for positive one. And instead of get grade, again, we're going to do get ID. It's a simple way to change it from ascending to descending order. So when I run this, Bob comes before Joe because Bob has a lower ID number. But Joe comes before Bob in the second case because he has a higher number and we're sorting by descending instead of ascending. Let's take this one step further with the next program. In this program, I've kept the same compare method, which is going to compare IDs. In the natural order, using the compare to method would be ascending, but the compare method of the comparator would compare them descending. So what I've done is I've un uncommented the third student, Sally, so we can see how these three will be sorted. And I've constructed an object of the Interface 11 class. And I have to do that because that's going to be used for my comparator. Right here, I have put all of the students into the student array. I've printed them out before they're sorted, I've sorted them, and then I've printed them out after they've been sorted. Same thing with the array list. Put them inside of there, printed them out, sorted them, and then printed them out again. And we can see from the results that natural ordering is going to put them one, two, three. So the IDs are correct. So it's going to be Bob, Sally, and then Joe. And then what we can do with both the arrays sort and the collection sort, they have an overloaded sort method that can add the comparator to it. So let's add the comparator descending to both of the sorts. And now we can see that they are sorted in descending order as opposed to ascending order. We have three, two, one, three, two, one. Comparator interface is a powerful way to compare two objects without having to do anything to the class that you're trying to compare. Also, remember when using the comparable interface that your equals method should correspond with your compare to zero return method.